Hi, I'm Sabin Yaakov. This presentation is entitled The Similarity of Back and Boost Converters and Answer to a Piggyback Converter Riddle. There is a relevant video in my YouTube channel and I'm going also to print this link at the page of the YouTube video that you are now watching. So what was the riddle? The riddle was test your power electronic intuition, a piggyback regulator. And here it is. I'm showing here two possible solutions to the problem of boosting up the voltage of a battery. We have here a boost converter so that we have an output voltage which is higher than the battery voltage. Here's the inductor and this is a synchronous uh, rectifier or diode, so it behaves like a diode uh, with RDS on while it's on. And here we have a different approach in which we have in fact a, a buck converter which is producing a voltage which is added to the battery. In this case the battery is floating, no common ground. So this voltage is added to the battery to form the output voltage. So these are two possible solutions to the problem of uh, boosting up the voltage of the battery and I'm just considering the private case of say V out is twice the battery voltage here and here. So here delta, B, delta V would be the battery voltage. And the question was assuming the same inductor resi load resistor, same transistors and also a gain of two which approach will be more efficient and why? So there are actually two answers that I'm going to show here. One is the formal answer and here it is. Here we have the boost converter. We have the current coming out of the battery. This current is required for sustaining the output power. Now if we look now at the buck approach, the piggyback buck approach, we see that the inductor current is the same as the battery power. The inductor current is the same as the battery current because there is no DC here. So therefore for the same power level this current and this current are the same. Now the transistors in the boost are connected across a output voltage which is twice the battery voltage and here these transistors are connected across the same voltage. So we have the same current through the inductor. We have the same voltage across these, this uh, pair of transistors and therefore the losses of the transistor will be the same assuming the same RDS on. The losses of the inductor will be the same. Notice that in both cases the ripple of the inductor will be also the same. So therefore just from the point of view of the power level of the transistor and the inductor, they are exactly the same and therefore there is no difference in the losses between these two. There is a small difference in the way these capacitors are connected and I'm talking about it a little bit later. So this is the formal answer looking at the current of the inductor which is also the current of the transistor, looking at the voltage of the transistor we come to the conclusion that the power losses will be the same because the, the unit, this, this module here, is exposed to exactly the same condition. Now there is a super intuitive answer, I'm calling it, and it was offered by one of the viewers of the YouTube video that I've posted, that's his screen name, and here it is, which is kind of very, very tricky. And the idea is the following. If we take the buck solution, we take the buck solution and we turn it over. Once you do that, you get, of course, the ground here and plus here, but doesn't matter as far as the functionality goes. And then I flip it right and left and I end up with this configuration which after removing this capacitor is exactly the boost configuration. So in fact this original buck, once you flip it over and turn it say 
right to left to get the same orientation as the booth, you see that these two are the same. The only difference is the fact that in the original boost we had a capacitor here, while in the original buck we had a capacitor here. Now the voltage of the capacitor is a bit different, the ripple will be a bit different, and there is also one major difference which is important, and that is that in this case the ripple is going to go through a high ripple going to go through the battery, while here the battery is connected to the inductor, so it sees only the ripple of the inductor, not the switching of the transistor, which is the full span of the current. So this, in fact, will be preferred for a number of reasons. Number one, as we have said, because of the ripple, and number two, because the battery is connected to ground. But from the power loss point of view, this circuit and this circuit are exactly the same. Now here comes another question, and that is the following. If you have this configuration, is this a buck or is this a boost? Well, it looks the same. If you call this an output, then this is a, a boost, and if you call this an output, then this is a buck. So there is really no big difference between buck and boost in, in as far as the power parameters are concerned. So therefore, the same power loss if you have same power level in the buck and the boost. So they are exactly the same. And then, however, we know that there is a different small signal transfer function between the buck and the boost. In fact, the boost has a zero in the right half of the complex plane, while the buck doesn't have it. As it turns out, there is really more to it. So this is not discussed in this video. Look for the forthcoming video that I'll discuss this small signal subject, the difference between buck and boost. So this brings me to the end of this presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you found it of interest and perhaps you can use these ideas in the future. Thank you very much.